Ah, uh, the tax man may soon want more from your paycheck. An editorial in the Washington Post claims taxes will be going up for everyone, even those with middle class incomes. Joining me now is Dan Mitchell, a senior fellow on tax policy with the Cato Institute. A uh, good morning to you, or maybe not so much, but thanks for being here, Dan. <laughs> Well, glad to be on the program. Well, again, it's just the news, not you. But as we talk about uh, this, it's not exactly what Americans want to hear right now, especially during such tough financial times. What is your reaction to all this? Will the average Joe be paying more in taxes eventually? Well, I think the analogy is going back to that segment about the polar bear. The polar bear is government, and that woman in the moat is going to be the middle class taxpayer in the future. We've had record spending increases under Bush, and now Obama is adding even more spending on top of that. And sooner or later, that's going to mean higher taxes. And there aren't enough so-called rich people for the government to squeeze to finance all that, so they're going to go after the rest of us. Okay, um, Dan, according to this editorial, once the economic recovery is over, taxes will have to go up to help close the government's gaping fiscal hole. But President Obama has promised that taxes will not be increased for families making under a quarter million dollars, 250000 Which is it? Can the president keep his promise? I don't think that promise was very sincere. It was sort of like the first George Bush's read my lips, no new taxes promise. Obama already has a proposal for a massive energy tax. So if you drive a car or turn on a light bulb, you're going to be paying that tax. And of course, politicians love to say, oh, well, gee, circumstances are different than I thought. So I'm going to have to raise taxes. Politicians, tax revenue is like crack for them. They want to get their hands on more of it because that's how they finance their vote buying. Well, as part of the stimulus package, we are seeing a little bit more money in our paychecks, Dan, but how long can the tax breaks we're getting at the moment really last? Well, the administration already has sent out a signal that the so-called middle-class tax cuts that were part of the stimulus are only going to be temporary. So we're getting a little bit of dessert now, but we're going to get a lot of punishment and pain later. And here's what it boils down to. You can't have big European-style government without big European-style taxes. And of course, what does that mean? European-style economic stagnation hmm. in our future. Is there a breaking point for taxpayers, Dan? And if so, how close are we to that point? I don't know that there's a breaking point. You don't suddenly hit the wall. But if you look at the academic evidence, the higher taxes climb, the bigger government be becomes, growth begins to slow down, and taxpayers begin to evade and avoid taxes. So you begin to have a breakdown of the rule of law as people say, no, I'm just not going to have the government take 40 or 50 percent of my money. And, and you get in this downward spiral of higher taxes, more government, but lower tax collections. It's sort of that, that Laffer curve idea. And we see that clearly in high-tax European nations where people just hide their money from the tax man. They're not going to sit there like a fatted calf going to slaughter. Hmm. Okay, well, despite looking long-range and apropos segment, given that we've got three days till tax day on Wednesday, hmm. thank you very much, Dan Mitchell. Appreciate it.